On ITV2 now, Heartbeat. Here, it's new. It's red hot. The loser pays a forfeit. The winner takes it all. It's definitely a grudge match. We all want to live in a fair world, but sometimes life is unfair. Injustice is a hard thing to accept. But you're not powerless. Find the strength within yourself to take a stand. Fight back. Somebody gave you a rotten deal. Somebody treated you rough. On Grudge Match tonight, some old scores are settled once and for all. Getting to the bottom of a skinny dipping prank reveals more than the truth. I turned round to see who was next in, and everyone had gone, even my clothes. He ran all the way home. That's three miles without a stitch on. Best friends lock horns after their holiday heaven became a pain in Spain. The rain, you knew how much that holiday meant to me, and because of you, it was a complete disaster. She sat there for the entire week with a face like a bulldog chewing a wasp. And businessmen do battle in a bid to be top of the league. My wife didn't speak to me for three days. Thanks, mate. That caused me some major, major grief. The thing is, Craig thinks he's a bit of a big shot. So all I did was give him a chance to prove it. Now, please welcome Nick Weir and Lisa Rogers. Grudge Match, the show that promises to sort out all your problems, whatever they are, right here in the Grudge Match Arena. To the sound of our battle cry, don't get mad! Yes, if you've got a grudge, you don't need a judge. If you've got a problem with something, something that's really bugging you, we give you the chance to sort it out face to face with some good, clean fun. Two opponents will be going up against each other in three rounds of crazy combat to decide the outcome of their grudge. The winner of the Grudge Match will get the grudge settled in their favour and also win a fabulous prize. The loser will win a forfeit. Now it's time for our first grudge match. I'm going to the audience to meet Andrew Phillips. Andrew, hi. Welcome yeah. to Grudge Match. You like to be known as Phil, don't you? Yeah. Right, now, you are friends with our first two opponents, Chris and Mark. Now, what are they like? Well, they're both a bit mad. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what's the problem with them? What, why have they got a grudge? Basically, um, Chris played, played a bit of a prank on Mark. And um, it's been going on now for months and months, they're getting back at each other and stuff. I'm just wondering starting out. OK, let's hear from the boys exactly what happened. Hi, my name's Mark Boothroyd, I'm from Huddersfield, and I've got a bone to pick with my friend Chris, who left me here, stark naked, in broad daylight. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Hobson, and yes, I'm guilty as charged. I've been the butt of Mark's jokes most of my life. This was just a way of paying him back. It happened last summer. Me and Chris were in the pub with our mate Phil and a couple of girls from college. We'd been in there all afternoon and needed to cool off, so Chris came up with a good idea of going to the reservoir for a swim. Can't we? Ain't got his cousins. It'll be all right. But he just gave me the wink and told me we wouldn't need any, so we all got in the car and came down here. As usual, Mark was pretty keen to make an impression on the girls. He's a show-off, a total exhibitionist. So he went first. He got his kit off and ran down to the water. That's when I seized my opportunity. I grabbed his clothes and legged it to the car. I couldn't believe it. I turned round to see who was next in, and everyone had gone, even my clothes. <laughs> I stood in that water for 20 minutes waiting for them to show. I thought he'd have gone to a friend's house near the lake to get some clothes, <laughs> but he didn't, the Burke. He ran all the way home. That's three miles without a stitch on. I used to be a long distance runner, so the actual journey was no problem. It was so cold. For the first couple of miles, it was OK. There was no-one around, it was just country lanes and fields. But I got really stuck when I got close to home. I had to run past at least five houses. I could see everyone eating the dinner, and they could certainly see me. One woman even dropped a casserole. I've said I'm sorry, and I've been buying him drinks ever since. But I can't keep buying forever. Mark, if you want your own back on me, that's fine. But remember, I made a fool out of you once. Do you really want me to do it again? Chris, your little stunt made me a laughing stock. You owe me for a 20 minute dip in a freezing cold lake and a three mile run in the buff. All the pints in the world couldn't make up for that. And there's a woman in Huddersfield with casserole all over her floor because of you. <laughs> Tonight, you're going to see a side of me that even she didn't get a good look at. So beware, it's not going to be pretty. Okay, let's welcome. 
welcome our first opponents on Grudge Match. Let's welcome Mark Boothroyd. And Chris Hobson. It's going from bad to worse. You've just been seen by millions of people stark naked. You must be wanting some sweet revenge. I am, yeah. I've done some stuff to him in the past, but never anything like that. Why didn't you run to your mate that only lived about 100 yards from the lake? Would you turn up at your mate's house with no clothes on? <laughs> I suppose he wouldn't, you're right. Chris, you've been friends with Mark for about, what, 23 years? That's no way to treat an old friend, is it? Um, in my eyes, he got what he deserved. What, so, like, he's, he's always playing tricks on you as well? Oh, yeah, he's a proper practical joker. So what about this poor woman with casserole all over her floor? My heart goes out to her because uh, anyone to see a sight like that, I mean, <laughs> it's going to turn your casserole off, isn't it, really? <laughs> so do you think he's going to win tonight? No, look at him, he looks like a pig in tights. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me just tell you, the stakes are high. I just want to say one thing. Designer suit or birthday suit, because the winner of this grudge match is going to be dressed in a wonderful wool and cashmere and silk designer suit worth over a thousand pounds. You won't be leaving that by this side of the lake, will you? Very nice, but whoever loses this grudge has to do a lap of this arena in their birthday suit. <laughs> well, almost their birthday suit. So it's either going to be a case of deja vu for Mark or a taste of your own medicine for Chris. I can't wait. Let's hear it for Mark and for Chris. <laughs> Well, as you can see, things can get a bit hairy on Grudge Match, but we've got the perfect man to keep things cool. He's coming out now. Would you warmly welcome the former featherweight boxing champion of the world? He's a star, and he's here. Make some noise for Barry McGuigan! <laughs> Just, uh, just let us all know, just how far does your authority extend tonight? I have to have absolute authority, because the guys here, don't let them be in jovial, put you off. They, they really want to win. They don't want to be embarrassed anymore. I've got to make sure they stay within the parameters of fair play. So what if they really do break the rules and go too far, Barry? Well, I'll allow them to bend the rules, but if they break the rules, I'll have no hesitation to disqualify them. You're the strong arm of the law. You wouldn't disagree with Barry McGuigan, would you? Let's hear it for Barry McGuigan! <laughs> Let's get on with our first grudge match, and round one is called Dueling Giants. OK, guys, the object of this game is to knock your opponent over and pin him to the ground. I'll decide the winner. Now, you've got to keep it clean. No pinching, punching or kicking. OK, you got that? This is tougher than it looks, guys. On the bell. Seconds out. <laughs> So, Mark is with the Red Giant, and Chris is fighting with the Blue Giant. Neither of these guys are going to give any quarter. They're both extremely serious. Remember what Barry said, it's much tougher, perhaps even than it looks. Remember, this grudge match came about when Mark was skinny dipping in the lake, and Chris ran off with his clothes. <laughs> At least Mark's Giant's got his modesty covered with that very fetching blue nappy. Now, remember, these Giants weigh 50 kilos each, and they stand nearly three metres tall. Oh, Mark gave Chris a right shove there. He dropped him on his heels, but I don't think he's going to go down. Speaking of shove, when push comes to shove, this is very much a test of skill, as much as strength. Well, looks like we've got a winner. Let's see what Barry's got to say. Terrific battle. Two of them are exhausted, but Chris wins. Well, let's take a look at that again. In the replay, we can see that Chris somehow managed to unbalance Mark and his giant was toppled down. Oh, Chris even then rubs his nose in it. One game to nil, Chris leaves. It's complete madness. Let's get on with round two. Back to Barry. And this one's called Glass Mountain. OK, guys, you're an opposite size of the glass wall. The name of the game is to retrieve the ball from the wall's face, but you can only take them one at a time. When you've bagged the last one, it's straight to the top to ring the bell, and we'll soon discover who's lost. You got that? OK. On the bell. 
Remember, it's Mark in the red looking for redress after Chris left him undressed by the lake. It's a climb up the glass. First to retrieve two balls, get to the top and ring the bell, is the winner. And Mark's got his first ball, he's sticking it on his scoreboard to take the lead. While Chris struggles, Mark makes his second climb. That's Chris's first ball, and down he comes to plant it. I tell you what, I'd hate to be the window cleaner who has to polish that giant paint. Not with my little chamois. And there's Mark registering his second ball. Oh, Chris is a long way behind. Mark's last climb now will be to ring the bell and signal the end. Chris fixes his second ball to the scoring post. There it is. But Mark is shaping up for the win. And doesn't Chris know it? Look. Mark's just a few inches away from ringing the last ball of his bell for Chris. Oh, and Chris has slipped back down to the floor. That's the bell, and there's the free drink for Chris on the house and on his head. No hanging about for Mark on Glass Mountain. And it's one all. Well done, Mark. Chris, you had problems getting on that first start, didn't you? Once you were up, they weren't too bad, but that was getting you every time. I'm left footed, so the first step's the right one which I'm not used to, so I had to, like, try and change me, but... As, as they say in football, early bath. That's it. <laughs> Never mind. Mark, nice one, mate. <laughs> you, great, you! We're up that wall! <laughs> you were up that wall like a rat out of an aqueduct! Yeah, I, I had to win that one. Well, it was 2-0 and I finished, so... Mad for it. Yeah, so what, what was the impetus that was getting you up that wall so fast? To get him wet. <laughs> <laughs> you succeeded very well. Let's hear it from Mark and Chris. Well, a great effort from Mark. The bell tolls for Chris, and he gets a face full. And that evens things up nicely. It's one game each. And the crowd certainly seem to enjoy that one. Next battle up, Tarzan swing. Let's go over to Barry, who's poolside. OK, guys, you've got to swing on the rope to cross the ring, taking a ball with you each time. The first one to get three balls in the container is the winner, and the loser gets a dunk in the pool. Now, I know you both like water, so the best of luck. On the bell, seconds out. And the first to bring three balls back across the pool, one at a time, is the winner. Mark's in red and Chris is in blue. Oh, and Chris is in the pool already. What a terrible first swing. It's awful. Well, Mark is with his first ball, and he's now going to lob it into our special floating score receptacle. Nick, tell the truth, that's a kiddie's paddling pool. Well, I wondered if anyone would notice, but anyway, Chris has now pulled himself back onto dry land, and here's Mark on his second swing. Remember, whoever wins this game wins the whole grudge match. Chris is dragging his heels, but he's pulling back the ball to level the scores. Mark with his second scoring ball. That'll make two red balls in the special paddling pool to Mark's single blue. Yeah, I knew those match lessons would pay off one day. Ooh! The last time Mark was seen swinging no water, he was completely starkers, which is why this grudge match came about. Right, well, Chris is on his second ball, but it's not going to make a blind bit of difference because Mark is well and truly in command. There it is. That's his third ball. Three balls to two. Mark gets the third ball, the victory, and wins the grudge. And Chris gets a dunking. <laughs> and the winner is Mark. It was your start that let you down again, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm a rubbish starter. I'm a better finisher. <laughs> yeah. Your swinging wasn't bad, you just couldn't get your balls back in that basket. <laughs> it won't be the first time that's happened to me. <laughs> Mark, you can certainly swing on a rope, babe. I had to teach him a lesson. If you're Tarzan, I'll be a Jane. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Lisa's on the pool, Chris was in the pool, and it's a win for Mark. Justice was done in the grudge match arena. How are you feeling about it? I feel a lot better, I'm telling you. Yeah? Well, not only have you won the pride of grudge match, but you have also won this wonderful designer suit. Chris, 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 beaten by the pig in tights, as you described him <laughs> earlier on at the start of the show. Now, your forfeit does include a designer bit of gear, um, but it's a very small piece of designer gear. <laughs> You have got to run around the grudge match arena wearing just this beautiful gold lame thong. 
All right, if you save it for the end of the show, then you can run round the whole arena in front of our lovely audience here. I can't wait for that. <laughs> OK, guys, as is always customary here in the arena, shake hands, because all friends in love and war at the end Ladies of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, right? agree they're a great, great love. Let's hear it for Chris and for Mark. One grudge down, two to go. And join us in part two when best friends go on a holiday that turns hellish. And we're going to meet the boss who gets way more than he bargained for. And remember, don't ever get mad. suspension. The Ford Focus gives you ultimate control for everyone's benefit. Unbeatable! New home base price challenge. Unbeatable! It means unbeatable prices guaranteed. Unbeatable! Or they'll give you double the difference. Unbeatable! Unbeatable! You're gonna be you're gonna feel it and you're gonna say Yeah! You're gonna say yeah! Yeah! yeah. I have truly yeah. felt the yeah. bubbles melt Don't bubbles melt I can only get you hot now Why can't all talk with you this now? Have you ever felt the bubbles melt? with the money he saved with rollback. Welcome back to Grudge Match. Now, our next grudge is between two girls who went on holiday together. One got lucky and the other didn't. It all ended up having a bit of the Shirley Valentine about it. Here's what happened. Hi, I'm Jeanette Prince, and the reason I'm here in a Spanish restaurant is because I've got a score to settle with my ex-best mate, who abandoned me on a girly holiday in Spain. She left me in Gooseberry Village for the whole week. It completely ruins my holiday. Hi, I'm Lorraine Wilson, and Jeanette can't stand it because I met someone out there, and she got left on the shelf. As soon as we got to the hotel, I wasted no time and got right into the holiday spirit. I was talking to this bloke called Simon, but... As soon as he saw Lorraine, it was pretty obvious how he wanted to spend his time. I must admit, I did quite fancy Simon when I first saw him. We had a great laugh, spent most of our time together. But Jeanette, she sat there for the entire week with a face like a bulldog chewing a wasp. Can you blame me? I was on holiday and those two are terrible. They couldn't keep their hands off each other. I was sat like a gooseberry. I just wanted to go and see some sights. Well, who wants to go off sightseeing when all the entertainment I need is right here in front of me? And that was it for the week. We'd only been there five minutes and they paired off and buzzed off, leaving me totally on my own. She was just jealous because I found myself a really nice bloke, so I didn't want to go out partying all the time with her. I don't blame her, but she made absolutely no effort to get along with Simon and his mate at all. Taking second place to a boring holiday fling left me absolutely gutted. After tonight, you're going to wish you were on the next plane to Spain. Jeanette, you're just jealous because you didn't pull a hundred Spanish men out there and get whisked off your feet. You were a right pain all week and you haven't stopped moaning since we got back. If you think I treated you badly in Spain, well, that's nothing. Tonight, I'll give you something to really moan about. Come and get it. And now it's time to meet the girls in person. Let's hear it for Jeanette Prince. And Lorraine Wilson. <laughs> Jeanette, it's not much fun being a gooseberry, is it? Especially on holiday. No, I don't know why I went. It's a complete waste of time. <laughs> Poor Jeanette, I can understand why you're annoyed. Do you think you're going to win tonight? Of course I'm going to win, no question. <laughs> Fighting talk indeed. Lorraine, 
I don't understand what the problem is. All is fair in love and war. You were in love, you had to do what you had to do. It was a holiday fling and I was enjoying myself. She was miserable. <laughs> and uh, tonight is the night to get it sorted, correct? Correct. Well, I'm on your side. Well, they say you never really know somebody until you go on holiday with them. But whereabouts would you prefer to find out? Well, the winner's going to want to think very seriously about who they're going to take with them because the prize of this grudge match to the winner is a holiday of a lifetime at Sun City in South Africa. <laughs> I've been there myself and let me tell you, it is beautiful. Very nice. And the loser gets a week on a camping holiday on the Isle of Wight during the rainy season <laughs> And the best thing is, the girls live in the Isle of Wight. <laughs> so, let's hear it for Jeanette and for Lorraine. Yes! Here we go then, passports at the ready. We're playing for the holiday of a lifetime. Round one, let's join Barry with Sumo Blitz. Take the balls from the post behind you and bring them across and put them in the bucket on the opposite side of the ring. Now you can impede your opponent by pulling them, pushing them, or knocking them over. You got that? On the bell, second out. Right, in sumo blitz, as Barry said, the first girl to retrieve five balls, one at a time, and dump them in a bucket wins. Whilst at the same time trying to bump her opponent out of it. Question is, have these girls got the stomach for a fight? It's Jeanette in the green helmet, basically, because she played Gooseberry on holiday, and it's Lorraine in the orange. Come on, girls, you're supposed to try and take each other out in this game. That's more like it. I tell you what, this is starting to turn from a straight race into a heavyweight battle. Oh, <laughs> Lorraine and Jeanette is on the deck. That's more like it. Lorraine now has four balls in her bucket. <laughs> But now Lorraine's desperately trying to stop Jeanette scoring by clinging to the ropes. Stop, stop, Rick, Whoa. OK, out you come. OK. Ready, you ready? OK, on you go. Quickly, come on. And, yeah, that's an easy score for Jeanette. Seems to me that to do battle here, you need to have something of a gut instinct. And it won't be over till one of these ladies sings. <laughs> okay, but Jeanette's going to stand any chance. She'll have to flatten Lorraine and overtake her. Balls to four. <laughs> this was the turning point for Lorraine when Jeanette went belly up. And what a belly. At the end of round one, it's 1 0 to Lorraine. Well, that means Lorraine's out in front by one. Jeanette needs this one to stay in the fight. So let's get on with round two. And let me remind you all it takes two to twango. Yeah. There's a bungee rope. You've got to run along the mat and collect the blocks one at a time and return them to the base. If you drop a block, it doesn't count. Use this rope to pull yourself along the mat, and if you let go, it'll spring you back and it's slippy, so do be warned. It's the first one to get four blocks. You got that? On the bell. Seconds out. And they're off. Jeanette in green, Lorraine's in orange. And Lorraine's already been twangoed. Look, but Jeanette's got the rope. Hey, this is just like my kitchen when the washing machine blew up. <laughs> Jeanette's got her first block back. <laughs> Recoil through the phone to pin the prize. Finger in the air. Lorraine's struggling on that rope, but she'll get there. Go on, girl. Lorraine grabs her first block. No loss of dignity there. And look, I think she's lost the block in the, in the suds. She can't find it. Jeanette's got the hang of this rope. Oh, she's very comfortable for her second block. It's like the crest to run out there. And she bins her block. She's got two more to go. One thing's for sure, neither of these girls are going to want to see a phone bath again as long as they live. OK, come on, what's happening here? Jeanette is powering her way to block number three. Look at that. She's got a lot of power, this girl. Oh, and she's been yanked <laughs> back where she came from. <laughs> the bubbles have gone right up her nose. Look. <laughs> Oh, Lorraine, she's hardly got the strength to take her second block. Go on, you can go do it, Lorraine. On, it's only a second block. Come on, you can do it. 
Beautiful! Oh, there she goes. That's the quickest I've seen her move in this game. It has to be said, it may look like fun, but this game is tough. Here's Jeanette. Come on, Jeanette, you need this block to win the game. She's there. She's done it. Great win for Jeanette. Hang on a minute, Nick. She hasn't won yet. She's got to put the block in the bin. Ah, there we go. Now she's won. She's won in herself. <laughs> Was it as hard as it looked? Yeah. You're exhausted, aren't you? Yes. Yes, and you didn't win a but. Hey, Jeanette. You got a good start there. It's the important thing, isn't it? I'm, I'm just gobsmacked as he did. We're going to do it all in practice. Brilliant. You're both great laugh. Let's hear it for Lorraine and Jeanette. Well, a bit of a glum face there for Lorraine, but a great start and a flying finish for Jeanette. Covered in glory and foam, but for Lorraine, it was the soap on the rope that did her in the end. One all. We reach that critical moment in the show again where we must play a decider. So it's back over to Barry, Jeanette and Lorraine and Mexican Bean. OK, girls, the rules for this final game are simple. You're inside a giant inflatable sausage. You have to transfer your balls to the other end one at a time. The first one to do this is the winner. You got that? Yeah. On the bell. Seconds out. You'll never know how long it took to blow that thing up. Lorraine in the orange and Jeanette in green. Oh, Jeanette's red ball doesn't count. It's not in the envelope. Meanwhile, Lorraine scored at the other end. So it's 1 0 to Lorraine. Jeanette's all over the place. Clearly, Lorraine's gained her sea legs much faster. Poor old Jeanette doesn't know whether it's Ash Wednesday or Cockfosters. What's happening now? Oh, and I think Lorraine's going to score again. Yes, it's 2 0 to Lorraine. Oh, but there's another collision. Jeanette cannot get on her feet. <laughs> it's a walk, or rather a paddle, on the wild side at the moment. <laughs> it has to be said that Lorraine is pretty good at this. Oh, there's another score there. But Jeanette looks like she's been at the cooking cherry. She can't stand up for love nor money. <laughs> Jeanette hasn't scored a single point. Lorraine is completely wiping the floor with her. <laughs> and here comes Lorraine again. That's score number four. Poor old Jeanette can't get off the mark or off her backside. And now Lorraine's going back to her last ball. Jeanette doesn't stand a chance, does she? <laughs> She's down again. And she thanks her frustration as Lorraine splashes through. Lorraine stole Jeanette's man on holiday and now she stole the grudge match victory as well. And the winner of the final game is Lorraine. In the action replay there, we see Jeanette was falling over herself to try and score. And so was Lorraine. Final score, 2-1. Lorraine, you have won the grudge. And we don't want to hear another squeak out of her, do we? Not another word. Not only have you won the pride of the grudge match, but you're also going for Sun City. Can I ask you, who are you going to take? Not her. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. Jeanette. Life just is not fair sometimes, is it? I mean, first of all, you get dumped on your holiday with Lorraine, and now you don't get to go to South Africa. You get to go on a camping holiday in the Isle of Wight. How are you feeling about that? I live there. What's the point? <laughs> well, I think you're a great sport. Well done. Tell you what, girls, as is always the case, shake hands. She's about to cry, Lorraine, but get in there and shake her hand. Hey, come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, look, a they've, paddle. They've been a great sport. Right, well, after all that excitement, we are going to take a short break, but stay tuned for the man whose attempts to get into his wife's good books totally backfired. We're also going to see Chris and his lap of dishonour around the studio. Remember, don't get mad! Don't get mad! Take a look at the big names, big savings at the JJB T-shirt Bonanza. Like this classic PK Polo, only £14.99. Buy one, get another absolutely free. Take this V-neck Lotto at £12.99 and get this one free. Treat the kids to a Lecoq Sportif Mets polo shirt and get another one free. Yes! Yes! Buy one, get, get one free. free. Only at JJB. Style and design, that's what I'm interested in. When I get home, I just...
just want to relax. We like the luxury of real leather. I don't want to wait for what I want. And whatever you want, you get four years free credit. We're looking to pay for a year. Exclusive new designs, incredible low prices. Your Colonel's got something new. Juicy strips of chicken breast and a tasty tortilla. It's my new twister, and I like it. Nobody does chicken like KFC. Small cheese, big fun. Don't get mad, get even. Welcome back to Grudge Match. Now, the third and final grudge of the show resulted in Amanda Harrison here not talking to her husband Craig for three whole days. Amanda, what on earth happened? Well, to put it basically, we ended up being £450 out of pocket because his mate decided to play a dirty trick on him. £450. Let's find out what happened from the boys. Hi, I'm Craig Harrison, and I've got to get even with a so-called friend of mine whose sick sense of humour cost me £450. Hello, my name's Steve Burdett. The thing is, Craig thinks he's a bit of a big shot. So all I did was give him a chance to prove it. We went to this gentleman's evening a few weeks ago. You know, bow tie, dinner suit. A do for all the local businessmen in the area. You know the sort of thing. Five courses, lots of wine, after dinner speaker and everything. Then, when everybody's half cut, they'll start the charity auction. It was an auction where you have a secret bid. You all write down your offers on a piece of paper. At the end of the night, the highest bidder takes the prize. Oh. And there were three items I quite fancied. One, a photo of David Beckham. Two, a print of George Best. And three, tickets to see Jack Charlton in another after dinner do. Now I see Craig making a big show and filling his bids in. I thought, you don't want this stuff. He's just doing it all for effect. He's typical Craig, what a show off. With the wife being a mad Manchester United supporter, I stuck 50 pound down on each bid. The only money I had on me at the time. I handed it to the hostess and thought no more of it. And surprise, surprise, he wins all three of the items. He gets a huge round of applause for bidding by far the most money and sits there looking absolutely gobsmacked. I thought, what a tight bunch in here. How could I have been the highest? And then I click. I see Steve grinning like a pillock, and suddenly it all starts to make sense. He'd only gonna got my bid back off the hostess and put a one in front of the 50, making me pay £450 for two pieces of tat and a pair of tickets. The best thing was, he couldn't back down. Well, how could he? He couldn't lose face in front of all those businessmen. It was priceless. Well, not for him. His wife was furious. She wouldn't even let him hang the picture up, which is a shame, because they cost him a lot of money. My wife didn't speak to me for three days. Thanks, mate. That caused me some major, major grief. And when I asked you for a contribution, you flatly refused. Now, let's sort this out the old-fashioned way. Me v you. Bring me down a peg or two. Let's see you really try. Craig, mate. I'm sorry, but you were asking for it. And don't get too upset, the money went to a good cause. And it's not as though you can't afford it. So, what payback? Come and get it. Everybody make some noise for our final grudges of the night. Let's welcome Craig Harrison. And Steve Burdett. Craig, I'm all for having a laugh, but when it starts costing big money, I'm not sure. Yeah, absolute nightmare. Completely did me. Just one thing, what was the worst? What was the absolute worst part of the whole thing? Uh, definitely standing up and not having the money and having to go around the back and ask for a borrow, really. <laughs> really? <laughs> OK, get your own back tonight. Now, Steve, 450 quid is a lot of money to pay for a photo of David Beckham. I mean, he's in the papers every day. Don't you regret what you did a little bit? Yeah, it is a lot of money, but he's such a big shot. He's Yorkshire's answer to uh, Del Boy. Yeah, so do you reckon you're going to win tonight, or is he going to make you look a plonker like Rodney? Well, I mean, he's a big shot, but tonight I think he'll be a big flop. Hey, now that is fighting talk. All right, now, guys, I happen to know that you're not only into the bidding at the auctions, you also like a bit of a flutter. And 
You're actually both Mad Keen Racing fans. Well, this prize tonight is perfect for you because the winner of this grudge match will be taking his wife to the Martel Grand National at Aintree on the 8th of April. Full VIP treatment, full hospitality. How about that? Absolutely superb, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Worth fighting for. The loser will be dealing with horses as well, but um, it's the less salubrious end of the beast, if you know what I mean. The loser will be staying on home ground to muck out the stables at the Northern Racing College in Doncaster. So whoever loses, better get their uh, rubber gloves on, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right, best of luck, boys. Here we go, then. Let's start round one. Let's join Mr McGuigan and Tightrope Trouble. You've got to transfer two balls from one side of the pool to the other. Use the bottom rope to walk on and the top rope for balance. First one wins and the loser's rope becomes a lot less tight. Are you ready? On the bell, seconds out. Away they go. Craig's in the red, mainly because he's 450 pounds down thanks to Steve. But Steve's in the lead. Remember, it's the first to carry two balls across the pool who will win the game. And this is obviously a real test of strength, arms, legs <laughs> and jaw. And Craig's looking like a bit of a refugee from Red Nose Day there, isn't he? I think Steve's going to score first, but Craig is closing the gap. Oh, Craig's ball didn't stick to the scoring pole, but I'm sure Barry will give it to him. That'll be fine. Look at the concentration on those faces. They're working hard. Look at that, the cameraman's been in the water all night. Steve's got a comfortable lead, but Craig, if he puts a spurt on, could get back at him. Oh, I think he's doing just that. Look at him go. Oh, he's, he's overcooked it. He's, he's going. In he's in the water. He's gone. Oh, there could be a tidal wave. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve takes it with his second ball. And the winner is Steve. First, Craig splashed out at the auction, and then he splashed out in the pool. 1-0 to Steve. OK, it's early days. Anything can happen. Let's move on to the next round, which is Murder Ball. OK, guys, I'm going to start this game by throwing the medicine ball up in the air. You've got to wrest it from your opponent to score a goal in the basket behind you. OK? Now keep it clean. No punching, kicking, biting or pinching. And I'm in control here, so listen to me. OK? It's the best of three on the sound of the bell. Seconds out. So, murder ball is about the first to score twice. <laughs> right, guys, forget the ball. Let's just stick each other through the goal, eh? Craig obviously has no intention of losing this one. Ouch! Stop, stop, stop. Off the ropes. we we'll start it again. Give me the ball. Come on, get up, Steve. Get up. Come on, face each other. You ready? Here we go. Oi! Somebody should tell Craig this is grudge match, not crunch match. This is one tough game. Craig is certainly exposing Steve's weaknesses. And nearly exposing a whole lot more besides. <laughs> so it's first blood to Craig and a bit of nifty camera work to boot. Remember, it's supposed to be murdering the ball, not each other. Absolutely, you're Barry. Right, Barry you're right, you're right. Right, Steve gets the ball first. Well, the fact that I good it does him, look. <laughs> <laughs> now he's on the floor. Oh, really must be seen stars. Poor Steve. Yeah, if Craig's really on, getting his own back to that 450 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Craig's not going to let this one lie. Oh, now Craig's trying to pull his head off and put that through the goal instead. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. Or parents, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I'm sure Steve has seen better views than that in his time. Ooh. Oh, come on, Steve, just give him the ball. That's it, an easy score for Craig. 2 0, a crushing defeat for Steve and every other part of his body. The winner is Craig. Steve! Darling, now I know why they call it murder ball. <laughs> it killed you. Big time. I feel, like, feel like I've been in round with a juggernaut. <laughs> you have to be fair, you did employ some fairly underhand tactics. Or should I say underpant tactics? Yes, fair enough, yes. Uh, I've got to use my brain because I just haven't got the strength to beat him. 
Yeah, it's great. We did have a little shot of your butt. Better. Well done. You can't deny it. You really wanted that one, didn't you? Big time, yeah. That's worth the four and a half hundred pound. That's it. <laughs> That's really a bonus. Fantastic. There was one particular bit where you really chucked Steve against those ropes. Yeah. I was thinking, whoa, now this is supposed to be a game. You enjoyed it, though, didn't you? Felt really good, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Let's hear it for Craig and for Steve. So, Craig gets his own back. It's 1-1. One, one. So, we're down to the wire, back to Barry and Summit. OK, guys, the first one to reach the top of the slide is the winner. Problem is, you've got to build your own ladder to get there. The rungs are floating in the pool. Get as many as you can, work your way towards the top. The first one to hit the button activates the tip tank and the loser will know all about it. You got that? On the bell, seconds out. Well, everything hangs on this one. First job on Summit is to collect as many foam rubber steps as they can. They'll need them to climb up the slope to the button at the top. Craig's throw a bit ambitious there, as they both now start their ascent up the south face. And Steve's getting his steps lined up in double quick time. Yeah, well, he's very precise there. He's going back down to the pool now to hopefully collect enough steps to take him to the summit. You know, the only thing that stops the steps collapsing is the way they're stacked on top of each other. They aren't actually stuck to the slope. Well, Steve seems to be a tidier worker than our train. The only question is, has he got enough to reach the summit? Well, he is a quantity surveyor, so if anyone knows, he should. Oh, he's got a good action there. They're all fitting together like jigsaw puzzle pieces. Look at that! But has he got enough to reach the top? Oh, wait a minute, look, Craig's sense of direction seems to have temporarily deserted him. But Steve, well, he's just inches away from the win. He's going to do it. Yeah, he hits the button and flushes away Craig's chances. And the cameraman gets a face full of chlorine into the bargain. And the winner is Steve. They say what goes up must come down. And Craig is no exception. So Steve hits the button, wins the grudge and flushes Craig's hopes down the drain. Steve wins 2-1. Steve, you're dripping wet. But it's all worth it. You got the better of Craig at the auction and now you've got the better of him here in the grudge match arena. You must be feeling pretty chuffed. Yeah, I think I deserve it, to be honest. After going through that Powerball game, I felt like Rag Dolliana. <laughs> but to uh, end the day, like I said, it was worth coming. And Craig's been a great sport, but it's not his day today, is it? And, of course, you're going on the Martel Grand National trip at Aintree on the 8th of April. You made up about that. Yeah, big time, big time. Really looking forward to it. Craig. Now, uh, what was it you said you do for a living? Um, waste. I move my waste for a living. So you work in waste disposal. That could come in very handy <laughs> for your forfeit, because you're going to be spending the day moving horse doo-doo in Doncaster. <laughs> you might need one of those. You've been a fantastic sport, Craig. Well done. Thank you very much. All right, guys, you know the drill. Unfortunately, that's the end of the show, but join us next week with three more grudges for you right here in the Grudge Match Arena. And remember, as Hang always... Hang on a minute, Nick! There's still a small matter of Chris doing his lap of honour in his gold lame thong. Chris, where are you? Come on out! Chris! Hey! Barry! Where's Barry? You don't want to miss this, babe. Come on! <laughs> you, I can't wait for this. We'll see you all next week. And remember, don't get mad! Great Saturday Night In continues with the Brits, Family Fortunes and Blind Date all coming your way. But we've more camcorder catastrophes. As Lisa Riley says, you've been framed next.